Just behind the bridge is the roundhouse itself. It was built in the 1840s by Robert Stevenson to house the turntable for his engines. And it was abandoned by the railway and taken up by a wine merchant who used it for a store. In 1960, the wine merchants moved out and the building fell vacant. It reminds me of a slowly subsiding Albert Hall or a bull ring or a grubby pantheon. And in fact, the, the shape outside hardly gives you any idea of the enormous volumes which are contained inside. It's rather like that telephone box in Doctor Who. You can hardly imagine how large the volume is. Here it stands in the midst of this devastated car park, standing on this meandering estuary of the Euston Line. Well, this is the interior of the roundhouse. It's one of the most exciting spaces that I've ever known for a theater. Although, of course, it wasn't built as a theater. And perhaps it's because of that that it is so exciting. At first sight, one is simply reminded of the Roman virtues of the railway age. These strong iron pillars surround the auditorium. In fact, one's almost embarrassed to use the word auditorium, since the first thing that this reminds you of is simply a space in which all sorts of events might take place. It doesn't really seem to define the events in advance, as a theatre does. A theatre is already built to house certain events and defines them, almost before you've begun producing the play. But in this case, all that you have is a vast area which might accommodate almost anything. And it's that that inspires the producer. This is an objet trouvé. It's, it's like a hermit crab's shell into which theatrical companies can move and design their own events around the structure which they have discovered. And it's because of this that the inventions are so vigorous and exciting. Perhaps it teaches us a lesson about social design in general, and not just simply for the theater. This is a period when everyone's talking about recycling and about modest expenditure, at a time when we're spending literally millions and millions of pounds on new theaters and on new office buildings, on clearing areas in the middle of cities and putting up huge and expensive edifices, which we can hardly afford. This particular building teaches us a lesson for the theater and for society in general. We can, by discovering bits and pieces of the past, reconstruct them and use them for our purposes in the present and excite our invention to levels which a new building or a new structure or a new layout would perhaps not succeed in doing. When Arnold Wesker opened it in 1963 as Centre 42, an appeal was launched for 500,000 pounds. This failed though, and the roundhouse soon became the home of pop concerts. <laughs> 